Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the second part of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, and the many hints that have been arising throughout this DLC about what's next for the Pokemon franchise. What are we getting next year? Are we returning to the Johto region, or are we heading to the Unova region? Let's jump right into things. Now, there are a lot of conflicting pieces of evidence in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet about what's coming next. We know, very well at this point that Game Freak always likes to tease us. They love to tee up little hints, little bits and bobs, whether it's a, a painting in a building in a random town or a bit of NPC dialogue or something to do with certain Pokemon that get highlighted via being featured in a new mechanic or getting a new form or evolution, bringing back old characters, all of the above. They like to set up what's coming next. They like to tease what is in the immediate future for the Pokemon franchise. Next year, doesn't seem that we're getting any sort of DLC further for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're coming to the end of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with its DLC now half over and we're waiting on the second part, the Blueberry Academy and what it's doing in the middle of the ocean. So what's coming next? Is it going to be a brand new generation of Pokemon? Is it going to be remakes? Is it going to be a Legends style game, a spin-off of sorts? We have no idea. Two different pieces of information that the community has been grappling with since we first started seeing information about Scarlet and Violet's DLC is what region are they hinting at us? For. Are they hinting at Johto with Kitakami's Japanese inspired style? It did appear, and some of the Pokemon that they chose to highlight in the land of Kitakami, it made a lot of sense that maybe they were beginning to hype up the Johto region. I made videos talking about this over the months leading up to the DLC's release, talking about the many connections that Kitakami seems to share with Johto and Kanto. Of course, in the Pokemon world, Johto, Kanto, and Sinnoh, these regions that are based on different real-world parts of Japan, are also connected on one continent, Sinjo being to the north, Sinnoh being to the north, Sinjo in the center of the mountain somewhere, and then in the south, Kanto and Johto. Could we be returning to Johto? It would make sense on the timeline. It is the game that came after Sinnoh, and Sinnoh is the region we have just recently visited with Pokemon Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. If Game Freak was going in a pattern, naturally, the next region that we have not visited last is Johto. It is the region we have not seen in the longest amount of time. We've seen Kanto on the Switch. We've seen Sinnoh on the Switch. Unova is following it. It's the next game in the timeline of generations, but there is a region in between there, and that is Johto. And I do still think that that is highly probable. There was a lot of stuff teased in Pokemon Legends Arceus about the Sinjo people, something we got explanations and rumors about in Heart Gold and Soul Silver with the Arceus event. You traveled to the Sinjo ruins and you were able to get an egg of Dialga, Palkia, or Garatina. And that was if you brought an Arceus over from the event in Platinum. It had special moves. If you brought it into the game, you were brought to this region of the map that when you took a look was appeared north of Johto. There are plenty of teases in Kitakami of Johto Pokemon, Johto forms, all of these different things that would lead you to say, okay, They've been queuing up Sinnoh for some, or queuing up Johto for some time here. Two different sets of games in two different generations. They are beginning to tease this. It, it feels perfectly logical. Could it be a Let's Go Johto game? Could it be a Legends Johto game? A Legends Celebi or something of that effect? Could it be a Heart Gold and Soul Silver remake in some way? Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Uh, if you talk to or if you read interviews where the developers talk about their time developing those titles, they really wanted to pack it with the most features and gameplay mechanics that are possible. They kind of felt that it was a, a love letter to the franchise and to Johto. So to be able to go back and experience that region again could have some appeal to them. Of course, they could always just hand it off to an Ilka developer or something along those lines as well, like they did with Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Highly possible. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you could unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. 
and check out the join tab. See if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Then the wrench got thrown in. All of a sudden, in the DLC, we started to get some interesting teases about Unova. We started to see some things that began to put some dots together with Unova. Now let's get the, the order out of the way quickly. It would not make a ton of sense for them to revisit Unova before revisiting Johto because they do like to remake their games in bunches. They like to go in chronological order. We saw a remake of Fire Red and Leaf Green, although it was from Pokemon Yellow's base because you had Pokemon following you etc. in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. After we saw Kanto again, they went to the Sinnoh region. This falls in line with the order of Pokemon games that originally came out. You had Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire come out. Then you had Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red come out. Then of course you had Emerald, but we'd already been to Hoenn. It was a third game, a bit of a different circumstance. Then you had Diamond and Pearl. Then you had Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And then you come to Black and White and Black Toon White too. For following the timeline, we got Oras, we got Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. We then got BDSP and Legends Arceus. It would make sense that Johto is next. But Black 2 and White 2, Black and White, the Unova region is getting pretty nostalgic for a lot of people. And as soon as we saw that the Blueberry Academy is based in the Unova region, as soon as we started getting the dialogue from some of the characters in the land of Kitakami referencing Unova, as soon as we saw in Legends Arceus that some of the characters from the Unova region were popping up in the Sinjo region, in the Sinjo region, in the Hisui region. We started to connect some dots and say, well, what if they skip over Johto because it would be remaking a remake that they feel they've already completed? What if they don't want to do a Legends game for Johto just yet, even though they've kind of laid the breadcrumbs in Legends Arceus for it? If we went to Unova, what would that look like? There's three options that seem the most likely to me. And of course, they are the ones that everybody else has talked about. You could have a Legends style game in Unova. There is lore there to explore. There is a past of Unova there to explore. You have Kyurem and how it is the, the husk of the original dragon that split and became Reshiram and Zekrom. The kingdom of Unova where the two princes battled using these legendary Pokemon truth and ideals and all of the lore that was created and utilized in black and white's modern times can be traced back to ancient times. All of that is fertile ground for a medieval style legends game using some of these characters and Pokemon from the originals. If Game Freak wanted to take up a remake that way, they could do this. They already have an engine from Legends Arceus that could be used to lower development time on a Legends Purim game. And in that time, we could be setting ourselves up for 2025 when we get the next generation of Pokemon, the generation after Gen 9. All of that would make perfect sense. They could always hand it off to Ilka and we could get a top-down 2D-ish remake just like we got for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And this is very clearly based on some of the discourse online, maybe one of the least exciting things that they could do. I don't think we're in a situation where we get two again. I don't think we get a Legend Kyurem game and a Sacred Black and Royal White games. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think that was a one-off. Game Freak didn't want to leave fans high and dry with remakes because it had always been that we get these remakes every couple years, but they wanted to do their own thing. And that's why we got these two different games in the span of, a ca in the span of three months. I don't think that's going to happen again. So if we do get these top-down BDSP Ilka made remakes, perhaps for some of the people that are critical of Game Freak's game output, how much they put out, the level of quality that they put out, I have criticized Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet and the like many times on this channel, perhaps that could be an answer to those critics. You get an extra year of development time on whatever Generation 10 is going to be the games following Scarlet and Violet. You get another year off from a quote-unquote mainline new Pokemon game. We get a year where we're going back to a remake exploring that world. Pokemon anime gets some time to continue doing things in the Paldea region and, and follow its arc because just like we've referenced many times on this channel, Pokemon is a global massive enterprise of cards and plushes and toys that anime the video games all of it needs to kind of line up for them to introduce a new generation so 
if we do not get a new generation next year, which I think is highly unlikely, it's going to be Johto or it's going to be Unova. And while I still I still think there's there's just so much there from what they teased about Legends Arceus and its connections to Johto, while my heart still seems to rest in the idea that it's going to be Johto that we return to, I do admit that they are really starting to set up and reference the Unova region quite a lot in this DLC. And because it is the final part of the DLC, and because it's the part of the DLC that is going to connect more to terrestrialization, to what's going on with the legendary Pokemon Terrapagos, how all of this is impacting Paldea, I do feel that if you're going to make Unova games come out in the same generation as Scarlet and Violet, the fact that you're teasing that in its story-heavy arc of its DLC does give some credence to the idea that we could be returning to Unova next year. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section below. If we do get a remake of some kind next year, do you think it's going to be going back to the Johto region, or do you think it's going to be going to the Unova region? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you never miss any of my future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.